Hi, in this video I want to discuss um, pain and its limits. I've mentioned this before, you can only have you can only go so far, you can only have so much of an expectation believe people are going to take so much pain before they say enough's enough. But obviously like I mentioned before in some of my earlier videos I've mentioned that how you can only um, expect someone to go through so much pain before they say enough's enough. But obviously like I mentioned the pain is what gives us the meaning and purpose in our life to escape and that's the thing that gives us the constant drive to keep on fighting for something that's greater and greater but it's about eliminating, eliminating that drive in the end and that drive is the ultimate goal is to eliminate the drive that we have to keep driving us insane and that's the ultimate thing I want to mention you can only go so psychologically so far in recognizing the truth sort of like you can only go so far in experiencing any kind of suffering there is a limit to how much suffering you can experience um, obviously, you can say when a person dies of whatever means, obviously a person dies of um, stress or a heart attack or whatever kind of means. There's people that die physically because they've, um, they've gone through as much pain as they possibly can take. You can say physically they can only take so much pain, but also there's so much pain you can experience, period. Um, obviously, um, you can say add up all the human beings that have ever existed, and you can say there's still a finite amount of suffering there. Obviously, there is. Um, but it's still a, a significant amount of suffering, and the fact that there's any suffering at all proves the point enough. Um, but the point is, is it's still it's in in mass. It's obviously more suffering than say one person suffering. But if it's the same suffering, same exact experience, even though that doesn't really exist, um, and ex same same exact experience between one person and another person, there's a mutual understanding about how something ex um, may say feel or experience. Um, so. If even if you added all the same things up, but it's the same in every single human, it would still be, um, it'd be accumulated to be more suffering, but it'd be the same suffering in each individual vessel that's experiencing it. But obviously, that where the value equation becomes relevant is if you had to say, um, um, sacrifice two people experiencing that to prevent 500 people from experiencing it, but they had to willfully give up that experience and make the decision themselves and have that lie on their shoulders and make that decision be something they have to take responsibility for, and that, that's when the value equation becomes relevant. It becomes irrelevant once, you know, the crude nature, the crude, um, if there was nothing we can do about it. It becomes irrelevant if there was nothing we can do about it. Um, so it becomes irrelevant, but then again, what we, the fact that we can do something about it is what gives it the thought experiment any, um, any meaning to begin with. So it becomes irrelevant between how many people are experiencing it because it's the same thing if there's nothing you can do about it. Because, but some, since there are things we can do about it. Even if it comes down to you just ending it all to eliminate whatever suffering you have, um, you can change it and you can make those value equations. You can make the sacrifices. You can give up some of your time and some of your comfort to make sure that and you can create a cure for something and prevent so much more discomfort for so many more people. Um, even just for one person to prevent that kind of suffering would be something that would make your life more worthwhile and it gave your um, um, your value of um, you gave your value more of a positive. Your value, whatever, um, whatever value you have, um, your potential, your value potential, um, has been. You've been given more value potential at that point, and um, sometimes it's about making the right decisions at the right time. Sometimes you can have saved someone. You sacrifice your life to save one person. Tomorrow you can have saved five people. It's already too late, and that's what happened. At that point, that value equation means nothing. At that point, there's nothing you could do because you're already dead. And I guess that's where the value equation doesn't matter because what's going to happen is going to happen at that point. But the change is already the distinction. And what could have happened if you didn't make that sacrifice would have existed. And it's still something you could view as a comparison, even though it was going to happen that way regardless. So it's something that you can consider regardless of those kinds of um, deterministic circumstances where you realize there's nothing you do once it's already happened. But that's the point. It's already happened, and it hasn't happened yet until it's happened. So, um, yes, you can only experience so much pain, so much suffering. Um, you can only expect so much, someone to go through so much before they decide enough's enough. Um, you can only recognize life so much. Um, there is a limit to your expectation. Um, your anticipation, any feeling you have, there is a limit. And there's a limit. You've probably reached your limit, but the pain, obviously, you won't know until it's all over. But obviously, there's a limit, and there's going to be a maximum, not only that you experience, but your potential maximum that you can experience. There is a difference between your potential maximum, based on, say, the predispositions of the neurology, and your nerve endings, how much pain you can possibly feel in that one 
area before the pain before you can only go so hot once you get say at 500 degrees fahrenheit whatever you know 1000 degrees fahrenheit 1500 degrees 5 million degrees it doesn't really make a difference beyond say 500 degrees and that's you know it could be a little quicker at that point okay it goes through your finger quicker and you would almost argue that having the 5 million degrees would be better because it would just end it quicker you just in many cases it burned through your skin there's still a physical aspect when it comes to your experiencing of pain you can only go um, obviously the more you experience the pain usually the more often in many cases you can get you build character you build a resistance you build an experience where you feel like you can endure more in many cases you go through the most amount of pain to begin with um, but that doesn't mean that you're going to experience all that pain to begin with like sort of like you don't experience death until you die and that process usually happens at the end of your life be, be it a short life or a long life but that doesn't mean you experienced something beforehand that was going to be the equivalent of experiencing the beginning of that death experience when you were say five years old before and you died when you were 76. Um, so there's obviously a difference between the experience and your whole life experience so there is a distinction um, but yeah you can only recognize life so much and like I mentioned before the burning thing once you know there's only so much pain you can feel there there's only so much pain you can feel in certain circumstances and you can you can feel um, um, if you can there's certain physical aspects of feeling some kind of suffering or some kind of psychological suffering before you say um, it doesn't really make a difference at this point the difference be, the bigger it is say the bigger the nail going through your foot the smaller the difference it makes, the bigger it gets. <laughs> so it's a big nail, but since you it got a little bigger once it's already big, it's a it's far less of a difference than say um, the difference between a small nail and a slightly larger nail. And once you've gotten so much bigger, the proportionality becomes less important. So once you already have a nail this big, um, this big going this big is less significant than going from this big to this big. So obviously, the bigger, the larger you are, um, the less significant the changes become, especially depending on proportionality and things like that. So obviously, that means um, less. So anyway, um, and the same thing with psychological suffering. Obviously, like I mentioned, you experience most of it to begin with, um, and you usually harden yourself. You become callous, sort of like getting calluses on your skin. It gets harder, and it's harder to feel the pain from a similar circumstance. You, go, you can be going through the same circumstance, you just don't feel the circumstance the same way you felt it before. Um, because it's even though it's the same circumstance, it's the same physical process is happening, that's what lends the um, comparison that it's the same circumstance. It, um, the circumstance of your reaction and the pain that you're feeling um, obviously aren't the same, but the same physical reaction that was causing that feeling to begin with, that was causing so much more, say, pain or a reaction is the same it's just you're not as reacting as much in many cases our um, reactions are the thing that can exacerbate many of these symptoms that we may experience um, and it's about say recognizing those symptoms or recognizing the reaction and controlling that reaction in many cases can become a, a test in self-awareness and awareness of your circumstance and experience and recognizing how to react to circumstances of um, suffering pain endurance adversity hardship any kind of thing like that so in many cases that can be relevant in making comparisons. So uh, let's see, is there anything else to mention about this? Um, let's see. Yeah, you can only experience so much pain. Only you can only experience so much pain. There's there are limits, and I was mentioning potential limits and the limits that you've actually experienced. There are potential limits. That doesn't mean you're going to reach your potential limit, but I guess your potential limit was based on your lifetime. Um, but there's potential limits and limits that you have. There's a potential limit to based on how much threshold and say how much of a threshold for pain and how much of a tolerance for pain you have. Um, there's obviously predispositions, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to experience it. I have a threshold for burning all my skin off, but that doesn't mean I'm going to actually go through that experience. Obviously, those are very keen distinctions, um, but there are extinctions, distinctions that exist. Burning your, your hand on a um, on a stovetop. There's a certain tolerance you have for heat, a certain kind of pain, regardless of how it may happen. There's a certain kind of pain. There's more aching pains, there's more sharp pains, um, there's more obnoxious pains, which are usually the slow and aching pains, and there's more overt ones like a stinging, like a heat, that are more strong and more overt and more obvious and more quick. Um, sort of like a gunshot, or as opposed to a um,
a blunt hammer smashing you in the face. Uh, or a slow burn, say in a hot tub as opposed to a quick burn, um, jumping into some lava or fire. Obviously there's a distinction. There's also um, there's a potential, and that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to reach your potential. And there's your lifetime experience and how much you experienced based on your ex living experience. And there's obviously a difference um, you're going to experience, um, and sometimes you reach your potential um, of how much pain you can have possibly felt as a whole in your body, but not necessarily. Um, but yes, sometimes you can reach that potential and you haven't re realized it once you. Obviously, we're not going to really realize it unless we create specific circumstances. Say, like, okay, how much can I? Am I willing to take when it when it comes to say burning my skin? How much? What do I know I'm susceptible to? What kind of pain do I know I'm susceptible to? And whatever it is, to at least find out what you're susceptible to, and if you've reached your potential when it comes to um, how much pain or how much suffering you feel like you can experience physically or psychologically, um, you can only know so much, and you're probably never going to figure out your potential. Um, the, how much pain value potential you have in your experience. Um, so yeah, there's a difference between your potential and what you're actually going to experience, your threshold, and how much tolerance you have. Um, tolerance meaning you can go through it without reacting. And threshold before how much pain you can go through before even feeling any pain. How much pressure, how much physical pressure has to be um, forced before you feel the pain as opposed to I can feel the pain but I'm not going to react. My tolerance for it before I say no mas, no mas, no more, no more, um, is a difference. Um, so yes, and, but it's the basic idea is um, how much pain you can experience in your life. And um, there is a distinction, like I mentioned, between threshold and tolerance and your potential pain. And your potential pain obviously relies on your tolerance and your threshold. More both. Um, so I guess it's more to do with um, is it more to do with tolerance or threshold? Uh, both are more relevant because once you go beyond your threshold, uh, the tolerance becomes a, the consideration. But it's about the pain that you're experiencing. If you're not experiencing your pain, it has to do more with um, the experience that you're willing to pay. And tolerance and threshold are just byproducts of the experience of pain that you're experiencing or the non-pain before you feel pain. How much pain? How much? pressure has to be pushed on, forced on you before you feel pain and the tolerance. Um, it's just a byproduct of how much pain you're actually, actually experiencing before you say no more, but no more doesn't mean it's necessarily the potential that you have to reach the maximum amount of pain or value that you have in you before. Um, there's a potential peak in that because um, there's only so many ways you can feel things and you can only feel so many things at once. Um, sort of like um, you know, contractions in your penis or whatever you feel. You can only feel so many things at once when you're having your significant sexual interaction. You can often ignore certain things if you're distracted with something else. In many cases, those are good examples to describe how much, how, how distracted you can be. How you can obviously be distracted from one feeling, how that can distract from another feeling. Now, it doesn't necessarily rely on having spikes on you being flamed and being um, smashed in the knees with hammers and all this thing, all this stuff at once to rely on the fact that you're going to experience pain. Um, pain can all come from one source, and generally speaking, come from multiple sources is more generally speaking a distraction from a greater pain. So if you have all sorts of other pains, um, it, either it's instantaneous or these things are distractions from another pain that you're experiencing. It's a matter of what you're susceptible to and what you're, how much pain you're experiencing based on what it is. And obviously, if you have another pain at the same time as another pain, it's going to be more of a distraction more than an addition to the pain. So a hammer to the knee might be a distraction from the burning that you're experiencing, or vice versa, the burning for, to the um, knee, to the um, being smashed, every bone in your body smashed, um, or falling to the ground, breaking every bone in your body, but you're on flames, and the flames distracted you from the break broken bones, or the broken bones distracted you from the flames that you've been burning on for so long. The flames burning your your flesh. <laughs> But anyway, yeah, there's a potential for any um this. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just getting tired. Uh, so anything else to mention? Yeah, and psychologically speaking, like I mentioned, 
You can only react to so much. You can only react too much, so much to the psychological recognition of the existence that you're living and experiencing. Not only that, psychological pain, any kind of psychological pain you can think of, interaction, mind over matter, right? You know, people say mind over matter. Um, I actually made a note on that. People do say mind over matter, uh, but that doesn't mean you you should ignore the pain. It means you are ignoring pain. If you say mind over matter, that doesn't mean there is no pain. It means that there is pain. It's make sure you can go through the adversity. Try to fool yourself and manipulate yourself and confuse yourself into not feeling the pain as much. As much, because if you say mind over matter, I don't think that a person's necessarily saying, "Oh, there's no pain." Mind over matter. Your mind's the only thing that matters, and the mind's the only thing you have. Your subjective opinion. Therefore, if you ignore the pain, mind over matter. Obviously, there is no pain. That's no excuse. I don't think that saying can be misconstrued that way. Mind over matter means mind over matter. I'm going through a lot of distress right now. Let's get my motivation to be something that motivates me or my distraction mechanisms that I have psychologically distract me, say, from a greater pain, masochist, ma masochism. I could distract myself from another pain or look at someone else's pain, sadism, to distract me from whatever pain I'm feeling. In many cases, that's where sadism and masochism come from. Have another pain I have inflicted on you to ignore a greater pain? Or look at someone else's pain and use that as a distraction for whatever pain um, you're experiencing to make yourself feel better. You know, misery loves company or whatever that is. You like seeing someone else in misery to make yourself feel better. I guess maybe in certain circumstances that can be of help, at least to understand that someone's experiencing what you're experiencing, psychologically speaking. But then again, that is just a projection that's making you feel better and all good feelings are a projection. Well, all bad feelings are something that exists really in reality because all good feelings are delusions that you have of anticipation and expectation and what feels good. And these feelings of good that are physical are just escapes from tensions and negative feelings that you're experiencing, such as a positive feeling of not lo no longer having a broken leg or an aching stomach or an earache or whatever it may be, as opposed to... Um, um, well, how, like I was mentioning, you know, you're, you're avoiding a negative or say experiencing say you you're out of a negative or you're experiencing something like relieving attention like eating food um, satisfying your hunger sexually or um, orally <laughs> um, so in many cases that's all escaping a negative and yes so yes you are going through pain there's no mind over matter there's no subjective mind over matter you're still experiencing pain because of the fact that you use that as an example to begin with shows that you're using it as a distraction mechanism more than anything. So, yeah, before I go on for too much longer, I think I wanted the video right there. So if I have anything else to mention, I can always mention in another video. So, um, I think I mentioned that thoroughly enough. Yeah, so anyway, if I have anything else to mention, I will mention it in another, another video. So the basic idea was mind over matter and um, you can only um, go so insane based on the circumstances. Um, the circumstances of your interaction with reality, it can only have so much of an effect on you. And you can only go so insane. You can only experience so much pain. Um, the facts can only push you so far before the pressure decides to cripple you completely, killing you, or you reach your potential and you end up still living. Whatever it may be, there's obviously a limit. And obviously many other things that you contribute can be more chopped up the distractions and obviously mind over matter is more of a distraction the motivated mechanism but like I mentioned the motivated mechanisms that we have are obviously to avoid negatives and then obviously the avoiding of negatives is just a delusion and a projection of our mind because the thing the negatives are really and really in reality and all the positives are just delusions and escapes from negatives so anyway thank you and until next time bye